Ladies and gentlemen, on this Facebook Live, we are very fortunate today from the Summerlin, what, what is it called? Center Campus, right? Century Campus. <laughs> we have Jenna of Jenna and Trana Feli. Welcome to the show, Jenna. You can hear the studio audience goes crazy. All right, well, start off, tell them a little about yourself, how long you've been doing this, all that good stuff, please. Um, so I, I started in real estate in 2016. I had to write my notes down. So, and last time I met with you is probably, I think two years ago. So a lot has happened. Um, mm -hmm. I ended up getting diagnosed with cancer and I, I wasn't going to focus on that. So I, I put all my focus into real estate. I figured I'm going to be at home in front of a computer. So at the same time, they, uh, our company introduced the forever agent coaching. And so nationally, I, I went ahead and joined that. I was like, you know what, I'm gonna be at home. I can definitely commit to two weeks out of the month to do it, put all my focus and energy into real estate. So I didn't really have time to focus on cancer and, and let that bring me down. And everything has been going great since. So. Right, so just so just so everybody knows, you had you had breast cancer, you went through the whole, the whole thing from the operation to the chemo to the radiation to the reconstruction and now and you still had a good year last year too congratulations and, and, I, had a, and I had a great year last year so it's like i, I tell your you, your mother uh you were a rock star and still are over what <laughs> never mind just the real estate part but all the other parts that you've been through and so forth and never complained always showed you i, I don't think you missed a coaching call you had to reschedule one here and there because of your treatments and and doctor's appointments, but ultimately you were uh, on time the whole time. Which I'm trying to center myself. Here we go. Okay, I'm back now. Um, so uh, congratulations on that, and that's great. You're on the other side now. So if last year was great, can you imagine how you're going to finish this year, right? Yep, and I will say every I've, I've heard little rumblings from other people like, oh, this year it didn't start out good. My year started out great, but it was because of all the training and everything that did. I, you know, they have a pipeline tracker, which is great that I started using. Um, so if you're not using a pipeline tracker, use it. I, I feel like that is why I did so well at the beginning of the year and it's continued so far through this month. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you, you're, you all the proactive steps you've been taking, you've been in my coaching, you were in forever agent coaching, which you still are, which is through Berkshire Hathaway. Obviously my coaching is through Berkshire Hathaway too. And you've pretty, you're one of the rare people, Jenna, that actually, did a lot of the stuff that we agreed upon on our coaching calls, which has allowed you to get into really good momentum right now. And you're on a really good clip. You started out the year really good. So give me an idea. Okay. So in order to be on that kind of clip in real estate, what do you got to do? Like, what do you do in order to keep that pipeline full and so forth? Um, well, probably one of the things you always say, like get outside your comfort zone. Like that has been my biggest hurdle. I am normally an introvert and I, I think cancer, having cancer put a new perspective on just life in general. It's a huge mindset reset. Um, mm. So I just, I get out, I am more open to talk to people. I tell my story. I'm more relatable to different, all different types of people. And yeah, biggest thing, I'm not, I'm not a secret agent anymore. I could say that I started my first two years off like that because I was only part-time, but I, just step outside your comfort zone, get out there. Life's way too short. So make the most of it. Um, and use your, use your pipeline, have people do it. You, you definitely have become less shy because of all the different things you've been through. It's kind of tough because you have to, when you're going through these treatments, it really gives you a whole new perspective. Like you said. Yeah. As I say, I took the disc assessment, which is, um, kind of like a personality trait. And I, I did it in 2019 when I started to go full time and they, I'm not a very dominant person, which is the D part of it. And I like that test because they break down your um, natural style and your adaptive style. So my natural dominant was a, in a sub scale of one to 100 was a 20. And then my adaptive was a 10. And I actually took the test two years or three years later, I took it in 2022. So three years later and my, my D was my natural, D was still a 20, but my adaptive D was a 37. So I, I'll have to take it again and see what my adaptive dominant style has grown to after all this. Just as, it's nice. It's neat to see the changes. 
but all the changes that you've been through. Yeah. And we were just at the convention together and I saw you running around with your backpack from one event to the <laughs> other, trying to, trying to take in as much as possible in new Orleans. Right. You, what you know, and I, and I, I remember talking to it. I know you got a lot out of the uh, convention. So give him a couple of tidbits. Like what did you really hear? What stood out at you to you while you were um, there? All the, all the use of AI. I'm, I love technology. Um, I could say I was using chat GPT probably two months after it came out. And so I always, I always wanted to learn more about the chat GPT and everything that it had to offer. Um, just different, how to use it more, how to, I like learning the prompts of it. And, you know, they said chat GPT is only as good as the user. So when you put in your, um, I think it was rise, make sure you follow the rise rules and um, put put better uh, questions and, and more refined right. like what you want to output to, to get the response that you're looking for. You have to be really descriptive in the question, really detailed, yeah. and you don't be afraid to be over detailed in your question and then tell it what you want. You know, ask a question and give it the end result. Like I want five points on this or and boom, like it literally thinks for like 10 seconds and starts coming out. It's amazing. Yep. And I ask it to ask me questions. That's I, they, and they always say, say, please. I've always said, please, I do it. Like if I'm talking to a person and I'll say like, please help me do this. And if it's not what you think it should be, ask me more questions and it'll usually ask you more questions. So if you can actually kind of have a conversation with it, which really helps. Which is kind of freaky too, isn't it? Yep. You're talking. <laughs> so yeah, all, no, all I think it's great. Tidbit. What's that? Uh, all the little tidbits that um, you learn from the convention with the chat GPT. One of the other one things that I learned is that it can analyze documents. So hopefully I won't get in trouble, but um, it don't upload anything that is like sensitive, but I have had clients that say, Hey, are there any parking restrictions? And so you can actually upload the CCNRs to it, which I found out and say, look for anything that can be a parking description and chat GPT will analyze it and say, you know, and I always ask what page it's on so I can have a reference point and it'll say it's on, on page 38. It talks about parking and then it's really easy just to, when your client asks like, Hey, here's the CCNRs read over them. By the way, the question you asked me about parking, check out page 38 for some information. So very descriptive. I love it. I love it too. Mm -hmm. So, and then did you take any of that? Um, I'm trying to think there was so many different things there. So technology was one coaching was definitely another. I'm trying to think of the woman's name, Amy Wong. Did you take any of her classes? Um, I, I took a communication class. So that's what that, I, that was it. I don't know. She, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I did take a communication class from her. Um, I feel like being in front of the camera, being in front of people, me being a self-proclaimed introvert, <laughs> um, really helped just about talking to people, not using filler words. I try not to do that anymore, but, um, that was her. Was yeah. Saying, words um yep. and uh, mm, uh which drive people crazy yep. i think and i i do take another communication class that i've been working on so the best tips i can have for anyone is that he uh he said to record yourself for five minutes talking about any subject go back and watch it and listen to your ends and ums and then watch it without the sound so you can see your your body language i know sometimes you see my hands pop up because i talk with my hands and then he said, actually have someone transcribe it and leave all those filler words in there. And it'll make you better. It'll make you more aware of what you're saying. Um, see, I just said, um, again, no, I caught myself saying it, but I've okay. tried to, you know, even outside of real estate, um, I've tried to go out and take more public speaking roles. If they, yeah. if it's offered, I'm like, Hey, I'll, I'll try it. You know, I might not be the best speaker, but it gets you out there and it gets you the practice and the knowledge and that way when you are sitting in front of a buyer or seller you can you know communicate with your your emotions and body language better yeah because you know 55 percent of communication is your body language and your facial expressions and it's okay if you speak with your hand because your name ends in a vowel so you have to speak with your hands my name yeah. ends in a vowel too but i'm not italian but you know i always mm -hmm. joke that yeah it ends in a vowel but so i get to speak with my hands too but uh, no, I think it's good that you have you have animation to what you're saying, right? And let's face it, 
with what you've been through, plus all the training, you're becoming more and more, or I say less and less and less introverted, although there's absolutely nothing wrong I, with being introverted. It's just that you have to be aware of that when you're presenting some, to somebody so you can communicate in a way that, um, you know, lets them know that you're part of the conversation, you're paying attention. There's all kinds of things you can do to make sure that's happening. Right. All right, cool. All right, so let's just say, um, is there anything, uh, before I move on, is there anything else you wanted to add about the convention? Um, if you haven't gone to a convention, I just do it. Step outside your comfort zone and go to a convention. It's it's well worth it. I've gone to, this was my first out of town one. I've done the two other conventions that I've been in Vegas and the, the virtual one. You learn so much information. It's, yeah. And you, you, if, even if you use 10% of what you learn, it'll make your, your career better. Right. I agree 100%. And then what is it? I think it's in Washington, right? Isn't it in Washington next year? Yes, it is in Washington. It's in Washington and then probably come back to Vegas again. So we'll have like two years on and then because Vegas is probably the most it's the most efficient place to have one. But you got to move it around too. And everybody wants to come to Vegas every single time. But OK, good. I think like they go East Coast, West Coast. So I think I think if we do Washington next year. It'll probably be another East Coast, maybe Texas. And then I'll be back to Vegas. Right. Thought, so. Good. I like them to have it in Boston. That would be fun. <laughs> Just can't have it in, well, you could have it in March, but it'd have to be like April. Yeah, late March would be okay. All right, enough about that. What did you, by the way, what did you think of the food in, in uh, New Orleans? Did you like the food there? Oh, the food was delicious. So it was crazy. Um, I, yeah, I probably shouldn't have asked what was in something, but it was, it was delicious. So love yeah, the food. I thought even it was if, 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 I, if the convention was just the food, it's worth it. I think so too. Walking around every day after the event, stopping anywhere, eating. It was incredible. New Orleans is pretty crazy. It's definitely old. Well, but I'm from Boston, so I'm, I'm used to those. Boston might even be older. Boston is older. But, um, yeah. you know, it was great walking around. It was a great place to have it. You just, you know, as long as you're home back to your, uh, you know, your uh, hotel by nine, I felt safe the whole time. So I, I wouldn't, you know, they say it can get a little crazy, but it was really nice. It was really nice there. All right. So to be a top agent, uh, give a couple things like, you know, um, you and your mother have been doing this together for a while. Obviously, she's been in the business a little longer than you. Um, but uh, you you guys both bring something to the equation. Right. So if you could narrow it down to your three most important points to really be successful in this business, what would they be? What would you say? They um, are? Never eat lunch alone. Oh, we, we always take our clients out to lunch, um, whether if it's both of us or just one of us. Um, I like I that one. Say, yep. Uh, step outside your comfort zone. You know, if you just do it, it's not, it's not going to hurt you. And the worst anyone can say is no. And then, um, I've, you know, doing the forever agent coaching, they, they kind of ask us like, what would you do? And, you know, I, instead of just being a forever agent, I am like a forever learner. I am always learning, always taking classes. Um, you can't you can't go wrong being more knowledgeable. That's right. I think that totally they, agree. Yeah. Totally agree. And and you've definitely been a master over these last year and a half or so of getting outside your comfort zone because of all the different things that you've been through and so forth. But um, mm -hmm. I think uh, I think those are great great pieces of advice. You also you also use the tools like the Berkshire Hathaway tools and the VAC VAC tools a little bit too. So tell me a little bit about what you do there as well. It'd be great. Um, so they have a, one of the things that the Forever Tools, they have a members or clients only uh, vendor list. And if you're here, if you're listening to this and Rick, our, our company has the home benefits magazine, which already has a lot of those vendors. So I just, you can use those and put them in your book. And then what I like to do is because I have a client that does pools or I have a client that owns a jewelry shop or a client that's a DJ, you can add them. So I feel like Referrals is the easy part of business. It's nothing is going to help you more than by having a client saying, Hey, this is my agent. I've used her. You should use her too, because then it's someone they know that's giving that recommendation. And so I feel like when you have that vendors only book that you are referring to your own clients, other clients, they, they, Hey, Jenna gave me a client. Maybe if I know someone's on her house, I'll, I'll give her a client. It's, it's kind of, they're, they're proof that you're doing the business, that you're going to refer clients to them. They feel more comfortable re referring clients to you. Um, 
even if you have a client that doesn't, you know, have, I'm going to say like my client's own jewelry store, not everyone's looking for jewelry. It may not even be there, but it makes them feel like they're valued as a client if their information's in the book. And I don't charge anything for it. And I, I try to be that resource for my clients where they'll call me up out of the blue and, hey, I have a, a friend come into town. Um, my my pool broke. Do you know somebody? Yes, I have a, right. a client. You can call them directly. Maybe they get better service because they know me. They're not just calling anyone out of the a regular vendor book or out of off, you know, like I want to say the phone book, but online. So I think that that's probably the the best tool that I've used. Okay. The uh, yeah, Mike West will love you for for mentioning uh, the magazine, right? The magazine, and then and then also different things out of the VAC like uh, newsletters and. Uh, you know, the uh, neighborhood reports, market reports, all those drips that you can set them up on. I know that you and your mother use those as well. So any thoughts about those? Um, the, the market reports is really nice. That way, if I, I actually don't use the one in RBAC, but I, I base the one we used off of there. I don't like giving them a number. I'd rather show them and maybe there's a way to figure that out. I'll have to talk to someone in marketing. Okay. I like to say, hey, this is what's going on in your neighborhood. I don't want to give them a price for their home. And I especially right. don't want to give them the price of their home if they just moved into it because I don't want them to see what they paid and what, you know, Zillow says the house is worth or whatever, wherever the data is pulling from. So just the activity, that way they can see, hey, my neighbor's house sold, this house sold. Oh, they just, you know, this is how much moved in. I want them to call me. I, you know, technology is great for the information. And that's why I will go back and say that clients only list. I don't like giving that two people per se because they know they can call me and i want them to call me i want to get them on the phone and have a conversation it's just another another way to make contact with them same with the the market reports i want them to hey this is going on in my neighborhood but if they want their home price they need to call me and right that's, that's good it's just kind that's of good like yeah the most important thing is that you're constantly giving them information and setting them up on a drip whether they're buyer seller sphere farming and so forth, and uh, you know, and I know that you even get you even got a little outside your comfort zone by doing a couple expires and old expires over the last twelve months too, which has been kind of an eye opening experience for you, hasn't it? Yep, I yeah, because I called expires and that was, I was like, I'm not going to do it, not going to do it, you know, I didn't need to do it, and then I I got on the phone and I didn't set so much like I wasn't going to say hey until I have, you know, three hours. I didn't time block it. I said I'm going to make something small, something attainable. I'm going to make 30 phone calls. So I went through, made 30 phone calls. If no one picked up that day, no big deal. It was, it was consistent. So I hung the phone, got on the phone the next day, made my 30 phone calls. Maybe I talked to one person and that, that was enough for me. I didn't want right. to commit three hours of talking or I'm going to do it until I get, you know, four people on the phone. It was, it was about, you know, just, just starting somewhere and being consistent. Right. Right. Yeah, you try to oh, you try a little bit of everything. You've you've gotten into a groove as to, to what works for you. It's working really well. You have deals, you know, listed. You have properties under contract. I know. Didn't you just list one of your largest ones ever recently too? Right? It was a couple million yep. or. I, it's uh, two point two million. I yeah. I don't have my car with me. I left it in my car. I was going to advertise this. Okay. So if anyone out there has anyone, I have a two point two million dollar listing in Boulder City. They are very firm on their price, which is why we haven't made any price adjustments. Um, but it's a beautiful home. It it would be a great if they have the money an income opportunity because there is a separate guest quarter that has their a separate entrance in the garage, uh, two bedrooms. Their house has three full kitchens, and I feel like you could live in the main home, rent the guest quarter apartment. You wouldn't even have to see them. So great. Yeah, it sounds like a beautiful property. I hope that sells quickly and for full price. Yep. Me too. <laughs> All right, Jenna, any final words you want to leave these lovely people here in Google? What did I say? Google? No, not Google Meets, in Facebook, Facebook Live Land. <laughs> um, yeah, just step outside your comfort zone. I, I would say going through what I went through, um, I want to say focus your determination. I, those aren't the quiet words, but it would, it would be be persistent with purpose. Um, you know, if you're going to focus on something, you know, be determined to do it, self-motivating. So I'm going to say persist with purpose. Make sure you're not just doing it just because have a purpose behind it. And 
um, if you're not a forever agent, take the coaching and, and become a forever learner. You know, you can do coaching with Rick and you can do the coaching with the forever agent at the same time. It's more knowledge. It's going to be there to help you. That's what you did. Yeah. While you were going through your treatments, you're still a mom, you're still selling. Okay. You had all that going on. So when you say be efficient with your time, you really had to live by that because you didn't, you didn't have a lot of time with all the treatments and everything you were going through. So my next question is, okay, so have you had your first hair trimming? I have, <laughs> I I'm, I'm being stubborn and I haven't gone back. So I want it to get a little bit longer, but I will say I, I sold houses, even going through treatments. I just kind of scheduled closings. I have pictures of me and I, I didn't post any pictures of me when I, when I looked like you, Rick, <laughs> but I, I remember that. That's, a, that's a huge client. accomplishment. Now that's all your own hair. That's awesome. <laughs> so I, yeah, I was out there with clients and I, you know, was had a little cap on taking pictures of it just sold. So I, I worked throughout the whole time. And I think, you know, if your client can see that you're determined, they know you're going to do a good job for them. And at the same time, so I am very interactive with my clients. Like I said, we take them to lunch, we call them for their birthdays or send a video. The, if you care about your clients, they're going to care about you. So a lot of my clients call me like, oh my goodness, I can't believe you're going through this. Do you need anything? I'm like, I am fine. I don't need anything. Just, you know, I will get through it. You have a house, you have a family too. I'm doing fine. I'm focusing on work. Um, and still the letters the outpouring, I think I got so many blankets. Um, they, you know, they offered to bring me meals and these are my clients. I feel like I should be serving them. And when I needed them, they were there if I needed something, which was, a great feeling and such very, a great uh, message. Well, I mean, I mean, Jenna, you show up to their house, you're still working, you have a great attitude, you're getting through this. All they're thinking is, wow, what a rock star. Of course, I'm going to work with her. You know, I have a whole new appreciation for it. I'm grabbing the wall. This thing screws me up every time because it's like a mirror image. We deal with the Sunshine Kids, which, you know, and you saw them this year too at the convention. What a bunch of four little rock stars they were too, huh? Yep. I, the kids going through cancer, I, I feel like I was, I didn't really call it a blessing, but um, being diagnosed with them was, I was like, you know, I looked at the sunshine kids and I'm like, the, the treatments took up. I went over to 180 doctor's appointments in a year, which is pretty much half, half the year over half the year. And yeah. just being a kid and having your childhood taken away. So I will say if you're, if you're going to donate, donate to the sunset kids, um, they, their childhood is treatments and treatments after treatments. You know, I, I lived in a doctor's office for the past two years, it felt like. So um, I could only imagine, you know, I, I look back and I'm like, I'm thankful that I had a childhood. I didn't have to deal with this, but their childhood was just starting or yeah. they're, still, they're, they're still in it. So such a great point. Well, your, your inspiration, Jenna, and I, I tell you all the time, and I really believe that I tell your mother that too. It's amazing uh, what you've done in not not getting through what you've been through, but also continuing the business and also having the great attitude that you have. So it's great having you around. Keep rocking. Keep doing what you do. I really appreciate you taking your time out and being flexible since we did it a day early. So say hi to your mom. Keep it rocking. And we'll do this again. We'll talk soon. Bye, Jenna. Thank you again. Bye. Bye, everybody.